Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's questions answer video, which forward grip do you prefer? The answer to that question, like all things, is it kind of depends on what the rifle's purpose is. If I had to only have one rifle, uh, I would probably go with just a hand stop, uh, regardless of what accessories I had mounted on it. But because I have options, um, the accessories kind of dictate for me which hand uh, device I'm going to use uh, and the purpose for it. Uh, this is the Rail Scales Carve. It's just a simple hand stop. I like it a lot. On this particular gun, this is my PWS Mark 111 Mod 2. Um, it's an SBR, so I have less rail space, less hand placement, which means less mounting options, all things considered. Run an HLX Cloud Defensive uh, for the pressure pad, and then I got the Maul. This is a, pretty much a dedicated night vision gun. Obviously, it's got a day-use optic, so I can use it for anything, but it's mainly used for night vision purposes. I teach my night vision classes with this rifle. Because the control surfaces of the Maul and, and the, uh, the, the HLX pressure pad with the Cloud Defensive sit really low to the rail, the hand stop is ideal for hand placement. Thumb rides off to the side when I'm not using them. When I need to activate the light or I need to activate the maul or both or one or the other, uh, I can just bring the thumb up there, bring the thumb back down. It puts my hand in a pretty ideal, pretty neutral position for controlling the rifle. Uh, primary hand is going to work the controls, trigger, safety, charging handle, things like that. Well, sometimes charging handle, sometimes not, depending on what's going on. And the support hand is going to drive the gun and the, uh, the carve allows me to do that. It also provides kind of a pull cue grip if I need to brace off of say a barricade or something like that to stable the rifle further for maybe a more precise shot or a longer distance shot. The stubby vertical grip is probably the, the greatest legacy forward grip that you probably see. Um, they came of, they became very popular um, with the seven inch rails, like mil spec rails like the M4 because all the accessories, especially the accessories back then when they, they initially were issued, uh, they were much larger. Lasers were larger, lights were larger, everything was bigger. So you took up even more rail space through accessories. So that forward grip gave the soldier a place to literally grab the gun if they couldn't use a traditional hand support. They've gotten shorter, angled, a little bit more ergonomic. I like stubby vertical grips for controlling taller objects. Uh, this is a D-ball in A3. The activation button's up here. For night vision shooting, it just makes more sense, especially since you don't use a traditional, if you're using an IR laser in conjunction with night vision to shoot, you don't use a traditional cheek weld or traditional uh, shooting position. So I'm not gonna be on the gun like this, it's more gonna be kind of tucked low, a little bit lower on the, uh, the pectoral muscle. Even for longer range shots, I might actually tuck the stock underneath the arm and I control it from there. And that puts my hand in a much better position to control that taller, uh, um, device. The same thing with the PEC-15, it sits a little bit taller uh, than your average control feature such as like a pressure pad. So for me the stubby vertical grips are great on guns that have accessories that sit taller than well normal. Another great thing about the stubby grips, this is uh, the Rail Scales uh, Anchor. They also make an LDAG which is Picatinny Rail specific if you're interested. It is It gives me much more of a contact point if I'm going to use the rifle in a supported barricade position. Of course it's reversible too. You can use the angled side on the out or the in. Uh, but it actually allows me to bite more of the gun into a barricade or into a piece of cover or concealment or into an object in order to stabilize the gun for maybe a longer range or a more precise shot. You can do the same thing with a hand stop and as you can see there's a lot more real estate here to bite in and further steady the gun. As with many things, it comes down to preference. Rail length definitely helps you, the more rail length I should say you have, definitely helps you with your options. My feeling is if whatever your barrel length is, your rail length should be close to that because it gives you more options. The shorter rails, especially people who run a slick rail, one of the tendencies I see in students that have guns like that is they tend to rest the barrel against things instead of the rail against things because they don't have as much rail to work with and that can cause accuracy issues, especially if you're shooting out to intermediate or longer distance ranges. The more rail I have, more options I have. Pretty straightforward. As far as forward grips, it kind of is a, a personal preference issue. I can't say you have to do it one way or have to do it the other way. I don't like the straight vertical grips as a control feature. Uh, especially on longer guns, it doesn't make as much sense to me because you're putting a lot of asymmetrical press, uh, pressure on your grip. For me, even with the longer vertical grips, I'm still going to use that broken or that thumb brake grip so I can come over the top. So my grip is only slightly different between a hand stop and a vertical grip, but the vertical grip puts my hand in a slightly different position to allow my thumb to get a little bit higher more comfortably. I could still do the same thing with a hand stop, but the vertical grip lends itself much better uh, for that type of activation grip. 
I had a couple questions specifically about the fist. I have no plans on reviewing it. Uh, I have put my hands on one. Um, if you're into it, okay, cool. Uh, my personal feeling is it places your gripping surface on the outside of the gun. So ergon just ergonomically speaking, just based on physiology, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, it may work great in driving the gun for closer quarters, but you are putting a lot of your gripping pressure on one side of the gun versus trying to uh, neutralize it or minimize it. Um, uh, equalize it, I guess would probably be the best word, uh, underneath the rail space at the six o'clock. So that's kind of how I feel on that. If anybody's going to ask any specific questions like that, I don't have any plans on getting one. I've, I, I think I spent enough time on it to really get a good idea of what its pros and cons are. And the cons definitely outweigh the pros. So not interested. Uh, if you have any other questions or uh, about this topic or any other topic that you'd like to see a questions answered video on, you can drop them in the comment section below. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.